If you're ready for some Valentine dark and moody decor, keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first is going to be a mystery lady print. Of course, we will be needing some paint brushes. You know, we got a paint, and here are paints we're going to be using chalk paint in rich black, and then a rich espresso. I have a frame that I thrifted that's got a lot of detail in it. It's raised. I think this will be really pretty for what we're going to do. You can see it's got kind of a lip. Here's the print that I chose from Timu. Dark and mysterious, yet elegant and beautiful. This is a piece of cardboard that I saved from a calendar. So I want to make sure that my piece of cardboard is going to fit on the back of the frame because I want it to look like there's a lip. It's going to create more shadow. And that's the look that we want, right? Of course, dark romance. Now, I'm just trying to center this on the sides and I will start adding just a little bit of kind of smeared hot glue. Like you wanna put on your cool temp and you wanna just smear it out a little bit with the tip of the gun. And then you're gonna press it down. And I'm going in the area where the white is because I don't wanna cause any wrinkling or damage on the print part. So I'll do that on the bottom side first, flip it over, then I'll go right to the back with a little bit. Now, of course, you could cut this off if you would like, but this works for me. I'm going to press it down into that glue. This is going to give it a clean edge and make it look more professional. Same thing here. We're just going to press it down, make sure that you're not getting any bubbles, wrinkles, or any of that in there. Just keep going away from the middle and outward, and then finish with the last side. This is easy to do. It doesn't matter what your glue line looks like on the back, because it's on the back, no one's gonna see it. And we're gonna be covering this up so it is nice and finished. It would be a beautiful Valentine's gift for the one you love, with a little spooky heart like yours. Okay, so let's do something to this frame. I'm going to protect my table. I'll grab my black chalk paint and I'm going to go all over this frame. I'm making sure that I tap down into all of the little recessed areas and all of the areas above. I'm going to be sure that I get the outside edges of the frame the joints where they connect, and then uh, we're going to flip it over and we're going to get right on the inside. So everything will be black, every bit of it. See here, because we're going to make this look like a recessed canvas, we want to make sure it is all black and it blends well. So this is a thick piece of felt. I got a big stack of these at the, the thrift store, but you can definitely buy these. Uh, probably at any place you buy craft supplies. That's gonna be the back of the frame. We're gonna trim this down to make sure that it's gonna fit underneath that black piece of felt. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it and trimming it down as, you know, as small as I need it to be. Now it's gonna fit, so I'll just put it in place and because it's on cardboard, we can bend it up a little bit while still holding it in place and gluing it down. You're not going to see the glue line here, so you know, do what you can, do what you must. All right, and now it is pretty much centered on there. And we need to create like a cameo type effect. And I'm going to do that by putting some black on here. Now this is just my way of disguising that white line, which you could certainly cut off, but I love the depth that this is going to give. So there's just a bit of a paint technique. I have no idea if anybody's asking me. I'm self-taught with painting. I don't know names of things. I don't know what you would call this exactly, but I call it pretty. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm making sure that I get on the outside of that cardboard too, all over that white line where it, the print stops. So once I get it on there, I'm going to start kind of tapping it back and forth so that it creates um, like a more of a feathered or blended type effect, which makes using the foam brush much, much easier, like a better option, in my opinion, than using any type of a brush. Unless you had maybe a makeup brush, a makeup sponge, maybe that would work. 
So I'm rounding the edges. You can see here, I'm kind of rounding the edges. This gives it a little bit of a vignette, or uh, like I said before, I don't know why I'm saying cameo, but you know what I mean. We're rounding it out on the corners. This, again, is gonna give it more depth once it is placed into the frame around the edges. It's gonna give it more shadowy, mystery, suspense. You know, that good old look that we're, we're looking for in this video. So now I've got that part done. I'm gonna be sure I let it dry. Then I'm gonna grab some antiquing wax, just a tiny bit on that brush, and blend that black into the background of the photo. It's gonna make, it's just another one of those things that gives you more depth. I don't really know how to explain that more to you, but you see how light and bright that background is? We wanna bring that down just a little bit, almost to look like, you know, maybe she's in a haunted house, right? Maybe this is a haunted Victorian home. So we're going to give it that mystery by adding a little bit to it. It's still quite a bit light around her and around her uh, her face and her upper body. So I'm going to use in the same direction, back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to go over in front of her and behind her to give this a little more dimension and depth. And this is the result and i love it and it didn't take long to do you just gotta let your paint dry right love it so here's the frame in black that is completely dried and it's already got black felt on the back of it all right so i'm going to take this espresso now and i'm going to put it down on just my little piece of cardboard so that i can tap it off now, I did not have a chippy brush that was dry for this. Everything had been used and washed. So I took another brush and cut into it into rough edges. And I'm going to be using that instead. We we'll use what we have, right? And look how this starts to build. It is so pretty. I always, always encourage you to go light the first time. I don't want blobs in there that I have to wait to dry to go back and correct. So tap as much as you can off and then by pulling this brush across all of those raised areas, you can still see the black in between and all of the upper pieces are highlighted. So the beautiful, whatever you call the decorative edges there, they're highlighted. And I think that is so gorgeous. Of course, if you don't like this technique or you don't like this color that I've chosen, consider maybe using like an aged silver or a, um, maybe a copper, whatever color that you like. I just, this is my go-to metallic color. It just looks so good to me with a gothic and, you know, romantic, dark academia look. Look at it, y'all. Is that not gorgeous? It, it, it's amazing what a, just a little bit of paint will do. And it is perfect, I think, for this beautiful print that I got. And uh, this is not a sponsored video, but I think I paid like $2 for that print. It was very cheap. Okay, so I've got some of this velvet ribbon that came from Dollar Tree. And we're going to make a hanger for this before we put our print on. Because we want the back, uh, yeah, the back of the frame, or the belt that we're going to put down with the print on it, to cover up the bottom of this. So we're going to make a little loop. And this is probably a foot of ribbon, if I had to guess. And I'm going to put it down right over that original hanger that was there. Then I have this curtain, whatever this is. Y'all know what, what these are, right? You put your curtains on them. I get them at the thrift store all the time, different sizes, different colors. Some are metal, some are wood. But this is going to be perfect to use as a hanger for this beautiful piece. So I'm gonna cover up that original piece there. Grab my handy dandy staple gun and I'm going to staple on either side of the original hanger. It's gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna take that picture, make sure you got it in the right direction. And I'm just gonna give it a few staples to hold it in place. And I just kind of eyeballed what the center would be to make sure that my print is centered back into the frame. Didn't have to use glue here, just got it all stapled into place. 
and she ain't going nowhere, y'all. Not nowhere. I'm careful. I'm underneath where that other hanger is, so it will hold. And look at her. Oh, that's beautiful. So here's that ribbon I was talking about, and it was from Halloween. And I picked up a couple of spools of it. The drawback on this is there's only three feet of ribbon. That's the entire, what you're looking at is the entire roll. It's silliness, but let's put a bow on here. I want to give it a little bit more elegance, and she is wearing her beautiful clothing, and her hair is up, so let's give her a little more glamour. I just got some black string or black cording over there. I'm just going to use that to tie around the middle, but you can use what you have. I don't want this to uh, necessarily be a piece of jute. I don't want the brown showing. But we're going to cover it up, so I'll show you what you do if you only have jute or you only have floral wire or whatever you have. You can still make this pretty. I'm going to cut those at a slant, but you can dovetail whatever you like, and then I'll cut those off. To come up here to the top right where those two pieces are where the ribbon overlaps that loop and i'll just press that bow right down into it now protect your fingers if you know there's a chance that you might hurt yourself and we're going to embellish the middle of that i love this button i find these things at the thrift store and i've got a little bag just a very little bag i don't want to use the cameo here i think that this one is going to be pretty but i need to change it from the brassy or gold look to the colors that I've already used. So I'm just pushing it down into the top of that ribbon holder so that I can keep it still somewhat and flat while I apply that beautiful espresso. And then I'm just going to use a damp Q-tip to wipe the paint off of the stone in the middle. And I could definitely have left that stone black and that would have been beautiful. Isn't that pretty? However, this Tuscan red very closely matches that carpeting that's on the stairs that she's on. I thought, let's layer this paint on here and use this. Once it is painted up, look how pretty that is. That's a couple of coats of paint now. I'm going to use some gloss after it's completely dry, the gloss Mod Podge. I'm going to go over that stone completely and also over the metal part. It's actually plastic, but it's made to look like it's metal, right? You know how they do buttons. Now, if you have a pretty rhinestone or something, you could certainly use that there. But look how pretty that is. Such a beautiful color. I love the results of that. So, it won't sit completely flat with the little button part in the back. And since it's plastic, I can easily just cut that off. You could also use your scissors if you've got some tough scissors. Then I'll add some hot glue. And put it in its new home right in the middle. Y'all always protect your fingers, okay? Always protect your fingers. I've just gotten kind of used to where I put my hands. I don't have that many accidents as much. I love this. Let's go ahead at this point and kind of age this round also, or this loop. I thought at first I would leave it black because the bow is black, but it looks like a piece of the hardware, and since the rest of the hardware is done this way, I thought it appropriate to, to follow through and do it this way. And the results are so wonderful. I absolutely love how this turned out. It's very pretty. For Valentine's Day, for any day. You could even embellish it with rose or any type of flower. You could use a black flower, a black dahlia maybe would be pretty there. Whatever you would like to do. But I'm going to leave mine plain. Come and watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6. It's free. The next is going to be amber candlesticks. Alright, I'm going to have E6000 here. Definitely need some super glue. These are two little half rounds that I have candlesticks that I thrifted. They are wood. We're going to use these on the top so that we have a place to put these beautiful glass cups. Alright, so I'm going to use my oil rub bronze and some of this amber glass paint. My spray bottle's outside. We're going to put these together. So we're going to use a little bit of E6000. I'm just putting it in like four different spots on here. And I always do my E6000 first. It gives it a minute to set up like it should. 
and then it gives me time to quickly put on my hot glue so that it doesn't all dry immediately. I'm using the two glues because hot glue will hold it in place so that the super glue will take effect. Same thing here. Feel free to take a level and put on the bottom when you flip it over so that you can make sure that this is centered and it's not slanted because if you have something that's slanted, then your cups will be slanted and it will be very obvious. Okay, now I'm gonna take these outside, outside and spray paint them, to let them dry and then use the amber paint on the cups. What a beautiful look that gives. Now these look a little dark, but stay with me now because once you put the lights in there, oh my goodness. Okay, so now we're gonna grab that E6000. Glass will not stick as tightly or as securely if you just use hot glue. So you wanna put some E6000 on there and your hot glue, just like we did when we put these little half rounds on the top of the candlestick. Okay, and I'm also going to be putting a little extra glue in the middle of it just to make sure it stays. So we're going to set that down. Then I'm going to flood the bottom all the way up to that first lip with the hot glue. I do not want this falling off at all. You could use a lighter coat of the amber if you would like to, but I was having some issues with my bottles. And instead of giving up on this project that I have thought about for a long time, I decided to roll with it. We're going to make it work, right? All right, so now, same thing. We're going to use a little hot glue and we're going to use our E6000 or whatever super glue that you have that you want to use that works with glass. And then I'm going to flood the bottom of it with a big glue tool. To make a nice solid surface, we're going to let those cool. This is how they will look. I'm not going to add any extra pretty to it. This is so easy, very beginner friendly. Look how dark and mysterious this looks with my little fairy lights in there. But you could also use tea lights if you want to, whichever way you choose. Thank you for supporting me to all of my members, my magic makers, my buddies. You are the ones who make it possible to give free content to everyone else. The next is going to be our butterfly and roses. All right, I'm going to use scrap foam here. I'm not sure what this wood piece is, but I got it from the thrift store. I've got a dowel rod. It's about 18 inches long, I think. Two butterflies from Dollar Tree. And they are exactly the same print, the same size, or the same cutout, whatever. You see? Perfect. Then I'm going to use a little sponge brush. I'm going to grab that espresso again, the Tuscan Red, and that rich black chalk paint. Of course, we're going to start by taking off our tags, anything that we hang these pieces with, whatever they originally came with. I've got these two little scraps of wood. Like I said, I pick up stuff all the time. Don't even know what these are, but you could use a little piece of paper on the back if you wanted to. Just to fill in the holes where the hangers were, because we don't need to use those. I'll take some spackling, and I'm going to go right in the inside of the holes that are on the other side. And these will be our outside um, pieces. So these, this is what you will see, not the round part. And then I'm gonna use just a little scraper here to get anything out that's not flat down on that surface like it should be. Just pick it out of there, make it nice and neat and crisp. Once it is dry, we can begin to paint. Now, this part I'm kind of freehanding because it doesn't have any lines to show where the body of this butterfly is. So I'm using my own knowledge of the shape of a butterfly. And I'm going to trace this out with the black. Or fill it in with the black, I should say. You can use whatever type of brush you need. Whatever works best for you. I just want to make sure that I get enough on there. That this is rich and dark and we know that this is the center of the butterfly it will matter as i begin to layer the paint on there and we will do some layering but don't please don't be afraid of any of that if i taught myself to do it you can teach yourself to do it right and at least i'm here to help you to show you how to do it okay so if you need to pull this video up when you get ready to do it then you just pull this video up and we'll do it together see it's not perfect that's okay i'm not going for perfect 
and then we're going to do the other one and we're going to let those dry or use your drying tool or a fan or whatever you have then i'm going to grab that tuscan red and dip into that and then tap it off here now the reason i'm not using a brush is because the insides of these cutouts are dark they're like a a wood color like a, a darker color on the inside of the cutouts and that's probably has something to do with the laser that cut it out but i like the depth that that gives and i don't want to take that away by globbing the paint on in each of those little sections of the cutout here i don't want to do that so to preserve that can use just a little bit of paint and just pounce that on the top and that way there's no dripping does that make sense okay also as i'm doing this i'm going to make sure that i leave a section next to the body of the butterfly that is probably an eighth or a quarter of an inch you can see here that i want to leave the wood color and you'll see why later all right i'm going to spin it around and we'll start the other side this is very easy to do and again if you don't have a sponge brush like this grab a makeup sponge and just be sure that you tap out as much as you can before you put more on here You want to keep going until it is done and then you want to go on to your other butterfly and of course you want to do the same thing just adding and tapping off just like this all right love it This is easy, it goes by pretty quickly. And then while, after that's dried, we're gonna flip them over to the back side and take the dowel, take them outside and spray paint them black. And then I'm gonna grab my paint. And always be sure you clean your surfaces when you get them from the thrift store or garage sale or out of your closet. Take all the dust and grit off first, you know, for many, many reasons. And then sand, if you need to sand any areas, and then go over it with your paint. Then you get a smooth, nice, pretty finish. So I'm going to go over this entire thing. I'll go on the inside of that lip. You can see what I'm doing. And it really, I'm not using a lot of paint to do this because it's already black. I just want to make sure that I can see the shine or the wetness of that paint on there so that I know all surfaces are covered and it is completely one black color set that aside and let it dry then we're going to cut into that foam now the size of that hole in the middle is about the size of a nickel so i'm just going to kind of think about what that size might be and just trim down a piece of this foam to go in the middle it's like a spongy compact type foam you know that you get in packaging i save that stuff i sure do no i'm not a hoarder but you might think that if you saw my studio you might think it so i'm going to press it down in there and at first I thought, okay, well, this will work. So then I started adding my black paint to it and it occurred to me, this is not going to hold the weight of what I'm going to be doing here. So let's add one more layer. And luckily this candle lid fit right down in that lip, which always makes me very happy when something works like that, because it makes it the best template to put something in there. I've got a marker and I'm going to just trace that out. And once I have that circle the right size, I'll go back over that with my scissors and just trim that completely out. Easy to do. And I still have more foam to use for later because I worked in the corner and I didn't waste anything. I'll just go around the outside of it. This can be compressed, so I could squeeze it down if it's too big, but I try to get as close as I can to it. So a little bit of the hot glue Cool is best when you're using hot glue on foam. And then I'm going to paint this black. Now that's going to give me extra depth for me to put that dowel rod into. Make sure that it's dry, but keep your dryer very far away from it because it will shrink if you don't. I shrunk mine down, by the way, but I'll fix it. All right, so the back is dry, the front is dry. Now we're going to start adding a little bit of aging to this butterfly. Let's put the mystery back into it. Let's put the, the haunted back into the haunted house or the, you know, the mystery back into your Victorian niche home. Okay? 
Is this Valentine's? I certainly do think it is. And in the end of this, you're going to see why I definitely would consider this Valentine. However, you could use this in your home any time you would like. If you love the Gothic or the Victorian or the Dark Academia, I think any of these projects that we're doing today would really fit in nicely. See the difference that the aging makes? And that is just that black, that rich is for us, the rich black, I mean. But you see the difference of the two. So if you don't like the aged look, you can leave it bright like that. All right. So let's age this bottom, this pedestal or whatever we want to call this thing. Again, start light. That's what I'm doing here. We're starting light. And I'm adding that paint on a little bit of a time. Not putting a ton on there. This just gives to me a bronzy look. I've done this on several, several projects. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen my Halloween, then I really suggest that you go over and check out some of my Halloween videos because I do a lot of the dark um, romance and the dark academia, the dark look that I think you might like as well. And they'll fit nicely together with these pieces we're making today. So if you did those, these will work well with them, I think. I'm going to go all around my edges and all around the different layers because you see there are levels on here. Very pretty. And then we'll do the same technique to the dowel rod that we took outside and spray painted. So, you know, you can do the technique on spray paint if you would like. And they match great. This is going to look like one piece. So the last step on our butterfly, once the other aging part is done, is to add a little bit of bronzing. Well, it's not the last step. I actually do go back in and, and do something to the center of the butterfly, like I said. But we're going to do the bronzing first. And I'm just putting this all over very lightly on both of the butterflies. But you can go lighter or darker. But you know butterflies have that little bit of a, of a shimmer, a metallic shimmer to the wings. It's just that magical, beautiful look, you know? I'm going to very, very lightly, very lightly go over the black part of the body. And I'm going to grab that red again. And this time, I'm going to use a brush to go right next to the body. And then make one line, and we're going to blend that out into the wing. We're just going to drag the remainder of that out into the wing. This gives like a highlight to the middle of that butterfly. It just gives it a pretty look, in my opinion. Then when it's dry, if you want to go back in and add a little bit more, you can, just to keep it looking, you know, consistent throughout. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, so now we're going to sandwich this dowel rod right in between. And we're going to do that with some hot glue. So I'm just going to put some hot glue in there. I don't want this to be so much that it floods out into the openings there or the cutouts. I don't want that to happen. But I'm trying to make it a somewhat centered because this is going to be, again, sandwiched in between. We're going to add some more glue here. And then I'll flip it over right on top. So the red sides are out. The black is toward the center. Then I'm just going to use two more pieces of the same size dowel rod to fold those wings apart so that I make sure that it stays centered and that it rises exactly where we want it to be. After putting some weight by my hand, I put a weight in the middle of it. After that glue has set up, give it a few minutes. Then this is how the beautiful butterfly is going to look. I love this. I love it. So now let's address the bottom. we got to have a way to stand that butterfly up. So I'm just using a little awl that I have, or it's a leather punch. I'm going to put it straight down in the middle. It's going to go through both layers of the foam that we added. I'll add some glue here. And then I will put that dowel rod straight into there. Now, I could sit here and hold it until it dried if I, if I chose to do that, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to show you that what I did was took a piece of wire, I went through the butterfly openings in the center, and wrapped it over the monopod that holds my camera. 
So this is going to hold that in place as it dries while we continue to work on the project. All right, I'm going to add some hot glue here. You can see that it'll wiggle back and forth, but it is not going to come loose. I've got some of these flat rocks from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to add these black stones to the bottom of it. A couple of things these black stones are going to do besides looking pretty is they are going to help hold this in place. It's going to give us a little more of a support. It's also going to give us some little nooks and crannies to add some greenery or flowers into, and it will support those as well. You can choose whatever you like for this. If you want to add moss here, add your moss. If you want to put, um, if you want to just leave it black and not use anything to support it, just sit there and hold it for a while, you can do that. You can take rocks that are not black. You could take the little shards of crystals or the raw crystal pieces and you could put those there. You could use a lace doily if that's what you want to go for. All right, so I've built it up just a little bit and look at these gorgeous roses. Now these came from Timu. Again, I'm getting a lot of stuff from Timu, y'all. I just, I am. Everybody has their opinions. We don't need to discuss it, but I'm just showing you what the quality these only cost me like a dollar 99 for the stem that's right look how gorgeous these roses are they're beautiful and they are perfect for a dark romance theme right perfect they've got that red they have that aged look and they just fit in so nicely they are on a wire so the quality is definitely there i'm going to cut it into pieces like you've seen me do here and i also cut some of the greenery and i'm going to cut the little part that connects to the stem and I'm going to start adding these down to the cracks in those rocks. Again, it makes a great support, holds them in place and then also it has that that look, that black look, that the darkness. I just, I think it works so well together and I've never had, I've never done it quite like this, but I, I love it. I hope you love it. I hope you think that that this works together. I, it really does, in my opinion. Maybe you could use black sand here. Maybe if you're using something that's in your yard, you could just go grab a handful of stones and spray paint them black. You know, you could do that, couldn't you? So I'm just going to add the greenery pieces for the roses just here and there where I feel like they, they fit in and they look nice. And I'm going to make sure that I have like a graduated look. So we'll have our highest flowers then we'll have a middle height and then we'll have the shortest one and so the little single rose is going to be the shortest and i'll add that in and i'm actually holding it longer i, I cut out those pieces so you don't have to watch me do that <laughs> but uh, i do hold it longer and add more rocks as needed for support still gives a natural look very pretty i'm even going to add a little bit of greening to the back of one of the other flowers I love the look. Very pretty look. Okay, now I just decided, you know what? We need to have some some sticks or some limbs or something in there to look craggy and look a little bit older, right? So I've got some of this. Uh, I pulled this out of a wreath that I thrifted. And I'm just picking the pieces apart. I'm just cutting them. They are plastic and wire, so they'll work good for this. But just grab some sticks out of your yard, you know? I'm going to cut it into pieces and then add these pieces here and there to give it just that little something extra. That little something aged and beautiful. Plus, y'all know I love my greenery. You know that on my channel. I love the greenery. And all those, although there is no greenery on the stem, there's something about the movement that this gives just as a whole you know what i'm saying i guess that's maybe the artist in me coming out but sometimes i can't convey it as well as i mean to but look at the difference just that little bit so here's our dark romance our dark and moody beautiful valentine romance so we got roses for valentine's day we got the red coloring in there we also have the black and the bronze and the deep red that give us that beautiful dark look. I mean, look at her. That's 
that's a showstopper right there. That is beautiful. That would look so beautiful in a bedroom, I think. And you could use these all year long if you chose to. I wonder which one of these is your favorite. And do you think you'll be trying one of these on your own? If you enjoyed the video, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up and hit the notification bell because you will be seeing more of this type from me. Look at those beautiful amber lights. When the lights are off, those things are stunning. They really are. Take my word for it, they are. Such a simple thing. That was a really quick project too. I thank you for being here today, for watching my video, for taking your precious time to stop by and hang out with me for 35 minutes. It means so much to me and my channel is growing and it grows more and more when you share my videos and you, you put it out there on social media. I appreciate it so, so much. As always, I thank you for stopping by. You mean the world to me. I want you to go out and find some joy in your day today. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.